Powell and Brooks Robinson warm up before game four. Paul Blair is one happy fella after blasting a homer that won yesterday's game one to nothing. Andy Echebarren, who has done an excellent job behind the plate, and Dave Johnson are rookies who have been prominent in the Orioles' success all year. And here is Hank Bauer with Wally Bunker and Jim Palmer, young pitching stars who have shut out the Dodgers in their first World Series appearance. Jerry Hoffberger, principal owner and chairman of the board of the Baltimore Orioles, is enjoying the results thus far. Dave McNally begins warming up for a rematch with Don Drysdale, who opposed him in the opening game. Vice President Hubert Humphrey throws out the first ball. The Orioles bounce out of the field, brimming with confidence. McNally walks to the mound. Wills approaches the plate. The Orioles are ready. And the game is on. With Wills swinging at the first pitch, he flies out to Dave Johnson in short center to bring the first cheer from the record Baltimore baseball crowd of 54,458. Kurt Bleffery walks in the second inning, and the Orioles have two on with one out. That brings Dave Johnson up, and he grounds to Lefevre. who forces Bleffery at second. Kurt tries to break up the double play by sliding into Will. But Maury gets off the throw, then leaps high to avoid a collision. The throw is perfect, and it's a double play to end the inning. Frank Robinson steps to the plate in the Oriole fourth with one out and nobody on. Drysdale fires, and Robbie blasted deep to left. It's a home run. A tremendous drive of 410 feet. That's number two for Robbie in the series. He topped the majors with 49 during the season, and Dodger pitching hasn't been able to slow him down a bit. Frank heads for the bench, and a hero's welcome from his mate, as well as the fans. With two outs, Drysdale faces Powell, and the big fella gets all his brawn into a towering drive to center. Willie Davis goes to the fence, leaps, and he has it. That catch is almost unbelievable. Let's see it again in slow motion. Willie quickly gauges the ball's depth and heads for the fence. Now he looks again and sees it to his right. He takes five strides laterally along the fence. Then up he goes for the ball. Up and back, in fact, because the ball actually was beyond the fence when he grabbed it. In the Dodger fifth inning, Jim Lefevre leads off with a single to center. McNally now comes to a set position. And Parker slaps a twisting grounder to Brooks Robinson's left. Robbie grabs the ball with both hands, regains his balance, and makes a perfect letter-high throw to force Lefevre at second. Johnson then pivots to get the double play. Dave McNally cuts loose a curveball. Fans Roseboro at its a World Series record of 29 consecutive innings in which the Dodgers failed to score. Don Drysdale goes to the mound for the Oriole fifth. With two out, Drysdale faces Echebarren, and the young catcher strikes out. In the Dodger eighth, McNally, who has allowed only three hits, goes to a three and two count on Lefevre, who's leading off. Jim connects with full power and explodes a long one to center field. Blair races back and makes a sensational catch, robbing 
the fever of a homer. And manager Bauer deserves an assist because he had just sent Blair into center as a defensive move. In the Dodger ninth, Dick Stewart gets ready to pinch hit for John Kennedy. McNally is in fine rhythm today as he tries to protect a one to nothing edge. He whistles one past Stewart and umpire John Rice calls strike three. Al Ferrara is the next pinch hitter. Ferrara, who packs a lot of power, lashes at the first pitch and singles to center. The Dodgers now have the tying run on base. Aparicio comes in to talk with McNally. Nate Oliver runs for Ferrara. McNally pitches high and outside on a 3-1 count, and Maury Wills walks. The Dodgers now have two on with only one out. Oliver takes his lead as McNally gets set to pitch to Willie Davis. Willie swings and lifts a pop fly to right that Frank Robinson takes easily, and the runners have to hold. Harry Burkeen, Oriole pitching coach, talks with McNally. They want no mistakes now, for McNally is facing Lou Johnson, who led the Dodgers in runs batted in this season. After two quick strikes, McNally pitches again, and Johnson flies to center. Blair is there. He takes it, and the Orioles are the new world champions. The leaping Blair is joined by Frank Robinson and Russ Knight. Meanwhile, the celebration in the infield is just as wild. A mad, swirling mass of delirious Orioles. It's the first sweep for the American League since 1950. And the Baltimore Orioles, who were supposed to be short of pitching, set a new World Series record of 33 consecutive scoreless innings. Started by the veteran Mo Grabowski and finished by three youngsters named Palmer, Bunker, and McNeil. Baltimore, the birthplace of Babe Ruth and the home of the famed old Orioles of the 90s, now has some shining new heroes who played errorless baseball during the entire World Series. Manager Hank Bauer and his amazing 1966 World Champion. And boo, and raise the heart of a new, that's the ball game today. 